G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing in the color yellow as the English representing my insanity. It is the mister. And spawning in the north side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Ottomans representing Team Liquid, we've got the Muslim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth game in the play all five series between these two players. Two men walk in, one man walks away victorious, the other man slightly less victorious, but still un undeniably a very good player. We've got a beautiful matchup for you guys today. It is a new civilization, the Ottomans, up against one of the classics, one of the old school ones. It's going to be the English. This, of course, is a show match hosted by EGC TV. So if you haven't already, make sure you check them out, leave them a follow, all that good stuff. Over at EGC, dot, oh, EGC TV, there's no dot in between, though that does sound like a pretty good website for them, EGC.TV. Uh, and uh, yeah, seven or 15 GMTs, I don't know why I keep saying 17, 15 GMT Saturday and Sunday is where you can find them on Twitch. I'll leave a link in the description, but let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be experiencing today because we've got the mister on the English. Now, you guys might be aware there was a certain player playing by the name of Rupert. Well, that player has indeed been unmasked to be the mister. So we now know exactly who that English prodigy was. It was the mister all along being an absolute English god. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what we've got today because this is basically Mr.'s main squeeze. This is the civilization that he loves. I remember when everybody was saying English, a dog, uh, dog S. I, I can't say the S word because if I do, well, YouTube's probably going to demonetize me. You know what? I'm saying it. You know what? Fuck it, man. I'm saying it. <laughs> I love how I say fuck it. They, back when English was dog shit, uh, the, the Mr. was picking it. And uh, we see him picking it here again, going up against the Ottomans. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Muslim goes. Because obviously we've had plenty of time here with with the English. We know exactly what they're up to. We know exactly how they play. But the Ottomans, they're obviously a very new civilization. We've only had them for a couple of days now. And people still working out all their build orders. We can see some interesting developments already. It's going to be three on gold that get pulled from gold. Do we dare have trade? Do we dare have trade? If there's, a, if there's ever been a map for trade... It is going to be this map. Let's take a look and see. It's going to be the Twin minima Minaret Madressa. No, it's not going to be trade. If there's going to be a map for it, I tell you what, it has got to be this map. How nice, how easy it would be just to palisade this little section up here. Guarantee the safety of your traders as they trade down to this market in the corner. It'd be absolutely very, very easy. And you can get away with putting that trade landmark here. Get them a little bit closer up to that position and try and cut off that uh, that segment but we do see now the first villager making its way out to the stone outcropping now one thing to note is the ottomans do start with a little bit of extra stone you can see him right there already with 50 stone in the bag going to be working towards what would what one would expect is going to be that second town center uh and the reason i say that is because we see seem to see people moving towards this 2tc meta more and more at least that's what the meta is is currently doing but who knows the Mister, obviously an aggressive player, so he'd be crazy to think about doing it against him. The other alternative is that he does look for military schools. Military schools going to be available to you in the Dark Age. You can see it right there. Quite an expensive building, though. 150 wood, 100 stone. Two of those bad boys is pretty much the equivalent of a TC. Maybe three. Three is probably a bit, a, a bit closer. 450 uh, plus, plus the 300. Uh, but we do have Mister now going to be dropping down a mining camp on the stone. So it looks like it's going to be a 2TC play here for him. Curious what direction he goes, whether he thinks about the King's Palace, whether he thinks about uh, potentially going into the White Tower. Uh, always going to be an option for him. But it's going to be that Council Hall nice and early. Look at the time that he's got here. This is, just the, this is the classic English build order that you've got. Basically the rush up as fast as you can uh, from the Dark Age into the Feudal Age. It's that four minute age up. The Muslim also going to be reaching the Feudal Age at the exact same time. So we can see players both shifting towards this sort of high octane, high speed uh, play style. And uh, immediately, the Muslim now moves across uh, his villages onto the Twin Minaret Madrasa. And this is the smart move. This is exactly what people need to be doing. Uh, you want to be moving this bad, these uh, villages across to this immediately. Because you can see now these food sources are going to be spawning. I think, if, if I remember correctly, it will actually have a little bar down the bottom here uh, to indicate how much you've got uh, left until the next berry ball will spawn so these berry bushes will all spawn in over the next minute or so uh but then once they do this one here it's gonna it's gonna respawn i'll see if i can try and click on it it's so damn hard there's that one there's the third one coming in there you go 78 so they're picking it off apparently it's faster as well i don't know how much faster it would be but second town center gonna be coming through now and he just collects the 300 stone and that's it he's in off that at five minutes he's got enough for it second tc now coming down to, it's a quick second tc as well five minutes second tc not a bad timing at all 
And now we already begin to see those long guys making their way towards that position. He doesn't know where it is, but I'm sure he can have his suspicions as those longbows go, well, where, where are the villagers? Where are the villagers? I don't know. Where could they possibly be? They're on the TC, baby. Uh, it, it, nice little wall spot here over, over on that side as well. We'll stop those longbows from coming through. And now the, the longbows on the front side. And I guess the question is, from here, where does the Muslim go? I, I would be suspecting he probably plays a little bit more heavily uh, with regard to his wood economy. Just try and get some Sapahi out. Uh, um, you know what? I'm just going to call him Sparhi. I've called him Sparhi all my life. I'm gonna. I'm not going to stop calling him Sparhi just because you spell him a little bit different. They're still Sparhi to me. Um, so when it comes to food, this is a civilization that, in my opinion, it's just unrateable. When you think about all of the things that the Ottomans have got going for them, it's, it's really the unrateable civ he says as he gets raided on the wood line, but he's going to move around to this backside. Uh, why do I say that? Well, first and foremost, you've got infinite food spawning in from, from this. And let's say that you do manage to exhaust all the berries. You manage to exhaust all the sheep. You manage to exhaust all the secondary berries that you've got out here. Well, guess what? You just open this bad boy up. You click on this Anatolian Hills and you get eight sheep. It's 2,000 food that is going to be... Out. Villager goes down. Mister right now pulling out the sniper rifle, taking down one of those villages underneath the town center again. Uh, so very, very, uh, very, very cute little strategies there coming out from the mister. Looks like it's going to be a 2TC opening, but uh, quite heavy on wood still. So maybe thinking about a farm transition, it could be the way that he goes. Only four villagers on gold would signify that he's thinking more about playing feudal than he is about playing castle. Typically, you'd expect maybe eight or nine villagers down there on gold, but we can see that he is doing a transition into mills. It's going to be a double mill transition, and he's not playing around here with those those cheeky little vortex farms that you sometimes see. No, no, no. He's just going with the classic eight in the eight in the ring. But now we'll, we'll ride on board with with the Muslim. It isn't going to be, or it is going to be a stable coming down on the back. Spahi going to be coming out here. Uh, the spelling is Sipahi. I'm just, I reckon, yeah, I'm just going to go with Spahi. I reckon that's fine. What do you guys reckon? Leave, l let me know in the comments. Maybe we should run a poll or something. Twitch channel tw or uh, YouTube channel poll. You know, what? how do you pronounce Spahi? Should it be with a Sipahi or should it just be Spahi? I like, I like, I like to hit him hard, hit him fast. Just Spahi. Get him real, get him real going. But now Scout going to be moving out, looking to try and just be annoying here. Obviously, the longbow is going to be able to d deal with the scout. The Muslim wants to keep that bad boy alive. Mister now with a heavy amount of villagers on gold indicates he could be thinking about going to the castle age. Uh, what are these mills all about? Hold on a minute. Have we got some secret mill strategy that the mister has developed, which I'm not aware of? Because this mill is well and truly curious. Is he got for like a double upgrade? Is that like, is that the thinking? I've got no idea. Explain this one. All right. Explain this one. I feel like there's going to be an atheist checkmate comment coming up shortly, but I've got no idea what this is about. Triple mill like this on the berries. Uh, I mean, technically, he's going to be able to get down another mill here, but and he hasn't even placed like this one. I guess you could place it. All right, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. You guys work that one out. Uh, we'll head back over to the Ottoman base and see exactly how the Muslim's doing. As it looks like he might be going for a third TC. Indeed, it's going to be the third TC. So a very heavy economic focus and something that we continue to see throughout the current meta is this heavy focus. And the Ottomans obviously shift right into that. They're a very, I would say, a Euro-focused or a Euro-centric civilization. Not a lot of differences to from the, the Ottomans to any other Civ. You know, I'd, I'd almost be tempted to say to newer players, don't be afraid to get your hands on the Ottomans because they've got a lot of good things going for them that make them very forgiving for newer players. The number one thing for me is the Twin Minaret Madrasa. The second thing is obviously Anatolian Hills. We can see that he has indeed picked up Anatolian Hills. Uh, the sheep sitting there back behind the town center. He's got 15 sheep, by the way. So if you ever had a concern about food, I mean, realistically, the Muslim's probably going to be able to, to avoid farms until like the 17th, 18th minute. And that's crazy when you think about it. Like just, just the extent that he doesn't even need to worry about farms just because of this civilization, the, the infinite berry spawns that we've got. And now we can see an upgrade is coming through. It's going to be the survival technique upgrade that he's going to be picking up, looking to drop it down on the mill. We see the wheelbarrow coming through. There it is, survival technique. So there's no bar underneath here. It must have been an upgrade that was coming through. There's no way to tell when your, um, when your little berry patches are going to be refilled. You just got to kind of play it by ear. I I'd love for like a little timer above each berry patch. Now that would be cool. You know, you can see how there's like a little timer when you're researching a tech like this. Maybe just get that above the berry patch. And see, now we've just got this one just respawned. It's like, what up? I'm here. So there's going to be a, a, a critical or a, a number that you would want to have of villagers on your berry patches just to make sure that they're always being exhausted as quickly as possible. Ideally, as soon as it comes up, you want to try and exhaust it as quickly as possible. But at the same time, you want to avoid idle villagers. So 
you know, we can see here. So maybe, maybe that number's four. But the Muslim now are going to be dropping down military schools. We see them in the back of the base for the moment. Now, one of the things to note is that the military school kind of requires a lot of, of, of space around it. You're going to need, at the very minimum, a blacksmith nearby uh, to be buffing up the military school. And ideally, you want to keep them all next to each other. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, another military school here, military school here, and then a couple more. But we do have the Mister now reaching the Castle Age. It's going to be the King's Palace. No real surprise there. One of the best landmarks. I say one of the best landmarks in the game. I don't know if it's one of the best landmarks in the game. One of the best English landmarks. Let's just put it that way. You're always going to get value out of this landmark. Uh, but uh, we do now see it's going to be cavalry coming out for him. So a whole bunch of cav in queue. A second stable already dropped down. So just going to be playing it very standard here. Uh, and, and a huge focus on the economy. And take a look at this. We've got walls coming up all over this map. Uh, Demuslim trying his best to control the narrative here. You can see that we've got some very shaky hills towards the north of the Mister's base. Villager managed to wall up down to the south side. He's going to try and wall on the opposite side here. Look at this. Both players just walling each other out on, on both of their respective little flanks. Now more walls come down to the south and Sapahi as well as the uh, as the scout going to be moving back away from this position. But obviously they're well and truly aware of the knight coming through. Age up going to be coming in. It looks like it might be the... Uh, uh, I want to go with the siege landmark. I don't know. Let's see. Let's siege. Indeed it is. The Mehmed Imperial Academy. It's going to take some time before we get used to all of these names. Uh, but uh, yeah, just the... the, the it's, it's essentially a... It's, a, it's essentially a military school, but for siege. It trains free siege. Uh, and it also apparently gets affected by the blacksmith. So you probably want to make a blacksmith like somewhere around here, just so that you can hit the military school as well as the uh, the Mehmed Imperial Academy, or as I like to call it, the MIA. Oh yeah, you know that's coming in. Drops down the MIA. But uh, unfortunately, it, it looks like his army's gone MIA right now as the knights begin running through the base. The Muslim having a little bit of a trouble here because the villagers now jumping inside the TC just going to be completely empty-handed as that landmark does stall out. The, the knights back through onto the wood line. Taking down villagers, gets off the point blank charge. Takes out a second villager. He's looking good as the third knight now comes in onto the front side. The Muslim in a little bit of trouble here in Paradise. He's gone for the three TC. Did go for the age up immediately after, but the consequence of that is that you don't really have any response to these knights now. He's trying his best to get Spahi out here to deal with them, but obviously they don't do a whole lot of damage up against those those knights with that extra four armor. Knights now moving in underneath the TC. Village is going to get taken out. You can see it's going to take a few more hits. Knight coming in with the charge, and we've got Mister just rallying units across the map right now, just trying his best to keep this age up from happening. And the longer he keeps this from happening, the more advantage he grabs. Why does he grab more of an advantage? Because he's going to be thinking about relics. You can see the monastery is down, and he's already picked up his first relic, bringing it back in. Outpost also coming down on the front side. And the longer he can keep his enemy in that second age, the less he's going to be thinking about relics and the more he's going to be thinking about... Ah! Well, I mean, you don't really think about... Ah! But you definitely have that thought occasionally, don't you? Still now moving up towards that, that north side. We hear the wolf getting picked up in the middle. And, uh, the, I mean, the wolf now, it's, it's a lot different. The, the way that it's got that leash range... It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing because it means, you know, when you march a villager out across the map or a monk, that it's going to stay alive. It's a bad thing for me uh, because I absolutely hate the sound of the wolf and it's just going to be going off all game as players ignore this. If he just rallies out units here, the wolf's going to come in, give him a bite and then just head back and, and go back to its little spot. Numbers looking good over here for the Muslim though. Take a look at this. He's got a whole bunch of hardened spearmen out here with the Spahi working together well. Now, what's the advantage that you're going to have with the uh, with the Ottomans. If, if you're thinking from a perspective of like, all right, what do the Ottomans do better than other civilizations? Well, I would argue that they do the meta better. Uh, so they have the meta drums uh, that can always come in and provide that little speed bonus. So it would mean that in this situation, if you had the meta here running along with these guys, they'd be getting a nice little bonus to their speed. Wolf, once again, coming in, looking at aggro onto these uh, onto these spearmen. You can see how fast he goes. 1.89 movement speed. He can actually outrun the, uh, out, outrun the, the Spahi. 1.88 movement speed. But we do see the second uh, Imperial Council tech has been selected. It's military campus. He's got a third one available to him now as he drops down more military schools. I suspect he might be going straight into Janissary combat, looking for a little bit of a timing push here. Is that what we're going to be seeing? Is it a Janissary timing push coming in? The, the, the thing that makes me think that is because he's got three of these uh, military schools coming down. He's dropping down two at the moment. And I reckon he's working towards that third one. He's actually got enough to drop it down, or rather fourth one. He's got enough to drop it down. Let's see if he goes. Uh, he might be looking to slot it in maybe right here. You can see him just exhausting those berries. Wolf finally getting cleaned up. You can hear it for the 15th time being triggered this game. I, I You know, I'm going to insert the Bernie Sanders meme right now. 
I'm once I'm once again asking for an option to fucking mute wolves or at least so I, I don't have to listen to them in the replay games because it's so damn annoying dude I don't need to know about it just just let me cast in peace I'm so sick of these damn wolves on this mother frippin plane um, on this Monday to Friday plane <laughs> all right but anyway uh, it looks like the so we can tell by the plus sign here that the buff is not actually reaching the the MIA uh, so it, it's you're not getting the full advantage and it's a lot of advantage I mean we're talking 33 uh, percent extra um, extra training speed if you've got it within the influence uh, actually I think he, I think it might be picked up now I'm not 100 percent sure or does it provide influence we'll have to we'll have to wait and see because the push has definitely come out to shove right now. We can see that the uh, the, the Spearman going to be pushing forward. He's got plenty of them out. Spahi as well in tow. No meta at all to be seen. Actually, I take that back. Is that No, that's a Spahi as well. He's doing a decent job just pushing out through here. But at the same time, Mister being very greedy. Picking up Sacred Sites, picking up Relics. And we see the first of the Monks coming out to heal in the center. He's unfortunately going to lose his life if he's not careful. You can see the network of Citadel's buff or network of Castle's buff slowly but steadily buffing up. The, uh, the units and providing that attack speed, but it looks like he's been whittled down. Mister, gonna be able to defend this push for the moment. Plenty of units back here. Do clean up that sprinkled emplacement, and the first of the mangonels begins rolling off the line. We've still only got three of them back here. Let's take a look and see where he went. He actually went for fast training. So this increases production of military skills by 25%. So not avoiding, not gonna go for that genissary timing attack. Uh, that we had theorized the Janissary, a very effective unit against the Knights. So I would have loved to have seen them come out, but obviously Longbowmen do quite effectively against them. The Janissary actually takes extra damage against ranged units. So it's don't think of it like, you know, a Spearman against a Knight. So the Knight doesn't take extra damage against the Spear. Rather, the Spearman just does extra damage to cavalry units, whereas the Janissary actually takes more damage from ranged units. So that means it's going to get absolutely shredded by crossbowmen, by longbowmen, by hand cannoneers. It gets shredded by anything that's got a little bit of range on it. So it's, it's definitely one of those units you've got to be a bit careful about deciding when to make it. But Mangadel looking to set up on that backside. Looking good as he pushes forward. We've got our first meta out on the field. He's going to be going with the ranged armor. So he's going to be able to buff up ranged armor by plus one for a total of three ranged armor. So not too bad. And that actually takes Spy up to six ranged armor, which is kind of huge when you think about it. Throw into account the fact that these, these longbows are only doing seven damage at the moment. Obviously, yet to get the veteran upgrade. We can see it coming through now. But uh, I mean, that's still a decent chunk of change. That's for sure. All right, well, looks like I keep going to be dropped down in the center. Mister going to be establishing his presence, establishing his control here. Still, we sit in the Castle Age, thinking about a potential Imperial Age. Obviously, the English, once they get to the Imperial Age, are, uh, I would say, objectively, the best civilization in the Imperial Age at the moment. Obviously, it remains to be seen how good the Ottomans are going to come out. But hold on a minute. This raid, they're looking for villagers. Looks like Spahi, as well as the veteran Spearman and um, an Imam, going to be helping out. Looks like one Vil manages to stay alive. He's going to be charging up towards the back ones. Let's see if he gets any of them. Looks like one does go down. Second one going to go down. Third one almost going to go down in that mix. And he's done a pretty decent job there. But now the Spearman going to be coming in tow. The meta. We'll have a look and see. Has he picked up the meta upgrade? He does. He's picked up meta drums. Now, the question is, is he going to know how to use it? Uh, it? It's very awkward. You need to actually put the meta in the same uh, the same group as you've got all of your other units, and then they'll get the buff. But now, the knight's just doing a bit of a run around. I'd love to see some walls coming up here for the Muslim on the front side just to stop any of these run buys happening again. He's starting to stack up the resources as well. We see him sitting on about 3k at the moment, but that is absolutely normal to see uh, when you're playing on these new civilizations. The macro it's always going to be a little bit off, so it could be that he thinks about heading into a bit heavier of a siege composition. He's uh, got the crossbows out here as well. We also see the first knights of the Ottoman Empire making their way out onto the field as well. Knight up to the north, also looking to break through. We'll take a look at how we how Mister is doing. Still yet to see that Imperial Age come through just yet. So definitely a bit of a, a delay on that. Typically with the English, you expect to see it coming through about now. Uh, so who knows? Maybe this is maybe that's what he's saving for. But he's got the keep. There's no real threat to this either. I mean, the the, the major threat here is that just the Muslim right clicks the keep and commits to it. And with no boiling oil, there is always the threat that it just loses its life. 
Uh, so you, you've got to be very careful. But look at that army now for the Muslim. It's looking very big, very fierce coming out. It's got that golden glow on it as well from the meta. It's going to be buffing them up. And he's got the metas on the backside there. Going to be running them in. So they've got that extra movement speed. We did see it on there for a brief second. But if any of you know, doesn't have it, then they, they, you're just going to be, you know, it's, it's the weakest link scenario. You're running as slow as, as your weakest link, unfortunately, when it comes to formations. And that's, that's part of the reason why I would argue that this is a mechanic that needs to be changed. It is clunky and it feels bad and it makes you not want to get this upgrade at all. I would, ra I would rather just change it so that uh, the meta is always buffing up the movement speed of units around it uh, when it's applying this. So as long as it's applying a, a uh, an attack drum or a, a melee defense drum or a ranged defense drum, then it's using that because at the moment you can see he's trying to drag box it, but it, it, the way the drag boxing works at the moment, it's, it's just not good. What's drag boxing, by the way? This is a drag box. You're dragging a box. You're moving everything. You've got all of your units here. You know, you've got two, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units all in the same group. And you're like, yeah, right click. Now I can get my movement speed boost. And it's like, yeah, but it's so damn clunky. You just wasted so much damn time doing it. The Muslim now beginning to push forward on the outpost. We'll check in with the mister as he is finally hitting the Imperial Age. Wingard Palace on the front side. You guys know exactly how I feel about this. Oh, oh, geez. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's forward Wingard Palaces. But uh, the keep going to be coming out now. We do see he's researching the boiling oil as well as a trebuchet, dropping a siege workshop here as well. So could be thinking about going into that direction uh, even heavier or even more heavily uh, with that. But uh, now it looks like we've got with the Wingard coming down. It's probably going to be the Wingard army. We'll wait and see. Enclosures, the first technology of the Imperial Age to be researched here. No surprise. Probably the best technology in the game uh, that is coming through. Boiling oil completed. Another great technology. Honestly, prob probably another really good technology, but he's working to take down this la this uh, town center. Mister, not going to be paying attention. Doesn't cancel the town, the uh, the the keep rather. Apologies if I'm calling it a town center. My my brain's on another level today. It seems. Burning down the, uh, trying to break through the palisades. Army looking pretty decent right now. We're going to enter into the cinematic mode as we begin to witness the biggest battle ever unfold in this game, Mister. Looking to try and defend. The Longbow's moving back towards that east side. Mangonel's coming through. Will they connect? Will they connect? Will they connect from downtown? It looks like they're going to go a little bit wide, unfortunately. Attack move command is issued out. Keep going to be able to hold it down for the moment. He begins focusing down the buildings. Uh, yet to focus down this landmark. Villagers! Oh my lord, he takes down four villagers. We hear the Imperial Age come up behind this. It's going to be the Muslim who's also reached the Imperial Age. Villagers getting pulled. Big attacks coming through. Trebuchet firing off. Hits the Mangonel. It's not bad. It's not terrible. He's holding on for dear life at the moment. Villagers! Oh my lord, they are the consequences of having the English villagers as they all stand and shoot standing next to each other. And they all get eaten alive by a Mangonel. Mangonel, Mangonel, Mangonel! Oh my lord, <laughs> the damage! you got to watch out for these things, my lord. They're just looking and looming right now keep in mind this came in for free for free uh he, these three mangonels are all free mangonels uh so this is big it's it's you're forcing your enemy to make springles you don't have to make any investment obviously the mia is just pumping this out non-stop the mehmet imperial uh academy i want to say I don't, I don't know i i really don't know what those letters stand for i just know it's the mia but uh for the moment the the, the trebs trying their best managing to take out the the mango is doing a pretty decent job moving up to point blank range and finally the Mangonel is going to get cleaned out, and it looks like we've got a bit of a stabilization coming through here uh, for the Mister. So he's looked pretty decent. Bring the, the UI back in so you guys can see all the information on your screen. Mister holding on. Village account 103 versus 129. The Muslim actually looking pretty good on the village account. Stone walls coming up as well over on that east side of the map. No shenanigans over there. Palisade walls here yet to move through down towards these next positions. Just a few villagers out here gathering gold. Just a, just a small amount, a meager amount. A, 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 just a tad, just a, a couple of bills out here. He's got 30 bloody villagers out there and there's more moving out. 50 villagers just hanging out, gathering up resources. But now we've got Imperial Age that's come through for the Muslim. And the question is, what direction does he go? And you guys know exactly what direction it is going to be. It is the thick boy, the girthy boy, the guy with a little bit, well, let's just say you don't want to get into a bragging rights war with him because he is going to win every single time. Military school actually going to get taken out here. He does have the blacksmith on the front side. We'll take a look and see what landmark he actually went for. There it is. It's going to be the Istanbul Observatory. So important to make sure you've always got your uh, your blacksmith's 
influencing your military schools because this does buff that up to 60%. It goes from 40 to 60%, so a nice little buff there. Also acts as the university. Trebuchet is going to get taken down. It looks like Mr. Not really paying attention on the front side. Genissary is also going to be coming out. They've got their elite upgrades. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. The Genissaries are here with their, their, their cloak and dagger. <laughs> their, their wizard hat. Yeah, and the I'm sorry, I had to do it. Bombard gets the shot off. It's great. It's a Bombard. Oh, yeah, baby. And now the question is, how is the response going to be from the Mister? It needs to be Springled. Actually, the other response that you could technically go is the Counterweight Trebuchet. As long as you've got Shattering Projectiles, it has been researched as well. So he's got Shattering Projectiles. It means he's going to be able to get some decent hits here. But you can see the great Bombard not messing around. One of the things to note is it looks like the Muslim still yet to get Siege Cruise. This is the consequence of spending things on, on you know, you, you go for your Anatolian Hills, you go for Janissary Company, you're not able to get Siege Crews, you can't afford it. And he's, he's recently spent a point as well. It's going to take time for him to get the 320 Vizier points he needs to actually, uh, or rather the 320 points to get that Vizier point. You can see, oh, it's earned up to five Vizier points. So, oh, he spent, he spent them all. So he's never going to be able to get the, the Siege Cruise now. Siege Cruise is going to be a key in the late game here. And a bit of a mistake, if I might say, from Demuslim here to avoid not getting the Siege Cruise. Instead, opting for Genissary Company. I, now, I'll be fair, I didn't actually realize that you could only have five Vizier points to spend. So well, that's it now. He, he's done. Now, obviously, you can earn up to... You can get seven uh, if you if you go for the Great Council of 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 big big boys i think it's called no I, I really don't know look oh my god look at the trebuchet damage coming in right there those trebuchets i, th I thought the mangonel the great bombard was a mangonel with long range no the trebuchet is look at the bombard roll in gets a shot if it's a decent hit hits look at the long moment on the ground the great bombard doing absolute insane damage opening up let's see him go once again hit him oh my lord he takes down another two longbows on the back does a little bit of damage he's got the nice little formation in villagers running in <laughs> Villagers, say goodnight, sweet prince. Welcome to the reign of the Great Bombard, ladies and gentlemen. The superior siege weapon. Long gone are the days of the Trebuchet being number one, indeed. Now it is all about the Great Bombard. Oh, yeah. More Bombards in queue. Plenty of plenty of units. He's got to fall back from this position. The Treb's doing a great job of just whittling down these Great Bombards. Now, the Genissary is actually capable of healing or repairing up the, the Great Bombards out here in the field. Uh, so he does have six Genissaries. You can see them right here. Patch job. Repairs damaged siege engines at half the speed of a villager. Now, I'm assuming it probably takes wood to repair. Uh, I don't know whether it's half the wood cost, but you could look at the look at the Trebs, dude. It's literally long-range mangonels. Yo, can we nerf this this upgrade? It's insane. It's crazy good, and we can see him looking to repair it up now. Villager's moving forward. He needs to try and take out the trebuchets. We don't see a lot of cavalry coming out from him at the moment. Insufficient stone on the backside. And the, the Bombards will <laughs> say goodnight once again, sweet prince, as the Bombards have made their way within the, within distance. A third Bombard making its way out onto the field. Looking to take out the hand cannon here. Goodnight once again. Bombards looking to just clean everything up. It is Bombards against the world. But unfortunately, the world also includes some knights, and those guys are going to have to... Well, let's just say they're, they're, they're difficult to deal with. Village account 140 for the Muslim. They're yet to really stabilize here. I want to take a look at the base and see how many military schools we've got back here. That's a siege workshop. We see one military school, two, three, four military schools. I don't know whether he's got the fifth one down just yet. It looks like he has. Actually, it says not enough resources. That doesn't necessarily mean not enough, uh, not enough units or not, not enough, uh, like you haven't reached the cap. Uh, so I think he might just be running four uh, military schools and he does have the ability to train a fifth one or to make a fifth one. Damn, those great bombards doing so much work here. Continue to see. Look at this from from uh, from Mister. He's just doing an incredible job, just pumping out nonstop uh, trebs, trying to deal with this. But the villagers are going to be looking to repair this position. You can see the the great bombard taking a fair bit of damage here. He's pushing forward with the sabahi. You can see they've got a total of seven armor at the moment, but unfortunately, it does look like they they're still getting absolutely eaten alive. Fourteen damage on those longbows. The meta nowhere need to be nowhere to be seen right now. I'd love to see a meta or two come out here and just you know tap those drums with the ranged armor, that sort of thing. Up to five bombards now. The bombard numbers really starting to look good. But by the same token, the trebuchet numbers looking really decent. It's all about that siege wars, and now the bombards moving forward, looking to try and take out the counterweight trebuchet. Going to be successful. The first one goes down, but he's losing more on the backside. Four of them remain. He continues holding on. We see the hand cannon is looking to try and slice and dice their way through, but at the same time, the villagers on the backside just getting completely ass blasted 
by the, the trebuchets. They're doing so well with those bombards. And now more shots coming in. Look at the damage that comes out. Huge amount of damage. But fortunately, the great bombards push through so damn strong. Oh my lord! Look at the damage. You gotta you gotta stagger your you gotta stagger your units. If you don't stagger, you're gonna get absolutely blasted. That is crazy the amount of damage that comes out from these things if you don't stagger. If, if you don't stagger, you're just in, in in shambles. Still no chemistry, by the way. Chemistry gives an extra 20% to these Great Bombards, and I think it's probably going to be enough to actually one-shot your enemy Trebs. In addition to that, we've also got Siege Works, which increases their range armor by 10, but most importantly, increases the health of the Siege Engines by 20%. You go from 350, that's an extra 70 on top of that, up to 420. Nice! Bombard still... Unable to, um, Great Bombard unable to one-shot the Elite Knight, even with the Siege, uh, the, the, uh, the upgrade, the, I'm, I'm thinking Pyrotechnics, no, it's the Chemistry upgrade, still not going to be able to one-shot those Elite Knights, and keep in mind, I don't even think he's got, uh, actually, he might have Biology, we'd have to double-check, no, no Biology, so those Elite Knights, definitely quite effective against these, uh, against these Great Bombards, but now pushing up, looking to try and take out the, the buildings here on the south side, Mister going to be in, having a bit of trouble. And we see a trebuchet coming out. What? what? Hold on a minute. Do Muslim go for a trebuchet? In what, in what world are we? Do, do you not have the greatest siege engine of all time? The Great Bombard? Perhaps. Perhaps you do. But perhaps you've determined that trebuchets might be the best response. Keep still looking good. Still firing down the... the uh, I, I, I tell you what. This feels like Chinese on steroids. It actually is insane how, how crazy these Great Bombards are. I'm just wanting to see more Janissaries coming out. Janissaries are very effective counter uh, to Cavalry, and obviously Cavalry going to be the main counter here to the Great Bombard. I feel like Janissary Spahi together with uh, Great Bombards is just an insane combo. Spahi to deal with any Springholds, and then, well, Great Bombard to deal with everything else. All right, well, Mister sitting at 200 population. The Muslim still down a little bit. Not yet reached that maximum population cap. He's sitting on 109 villages, so he must have lost about 30 somewhere. I think it may have been repairing up these uh, these Great Bombards. I'm starting to think you might even want to spread out your Great Bombards against the Trebuchets. When the Trebuchets are able to use their, uh, their extra damage from the Splash, it can really hurt you. So I reckon it might be a good idea to think about doing that. We see more and more production buildings coming up. Spy looking for a decent little raid. He's also popped out the Fortitude, so he's going to be smacking these villagers extra hard. Let's see how he goes, how, how hard he's able to... Look at the damage just popping out now. 16 damage. Keep in mind, an extra 13 against ranged units. Uh, so any longbows, any crossbows, hand cannon, he's not going to stand a chance. Runs a few rings around him for the moment. And those bombards. Look at those juicy bombards. Oh, don't do it right now. Don't do it right now. Look at those damn bombards. Say hello to my little friend. Uh, wow. Those bombards. I mean, you're never going to see a better ticket seller than the Grey Bombard. That thing is just impressive. That's what she said. But uh, <laughs> now all of a sudden, I mean, the Muslim looking to push out against his enemy. He's got to be careful not to overextend. He was struggling with reinforcements. And we can see he's still got... I mean, he's got a fair bit queued up. And now look at the trebuchets unfolding. He's, he might reach critical mass here of trebuchets. It should be enough to one-shot the Great Bombards. We still don't see him getting the health upgrade. And no chemistry. He loses with the first Bombard. Second Bombard might be going down here. He's just working down the landmark for the moment. But the Treb numbers are still really good here. Six Trebs total for the, the mister. Now to Muslim, going to be on the defensive. Where are all of his units? I don't see anything to defend this position. He's just lost two Great Bombards. He's got six remaining. Bit of a raid still happening on the backside. Military numbers. It's down 186 population for the moment. Things looking tough for the Muslim, that's for sure. Keep in mind, this is a best of five play all five series. So obviously the the, the winner of this game, uh, if it is if it is the Mister, he will win the series. But that doesn't mean there's not more action between these two guys. No, sorry, Bob. It is a play all five. Look at this. Like quite literally long range mangonels. This is what this is, right? And uh, this is just the consequence of having a really good landmark, the Wingard uh, Palace, which in my opinion, one of the best landmarks in the game. Uh, if not the best landmark in the game. It's such an amazing landmark, and it guarantees English basically have a, a way to always win in the late game because they have 16 range mangonels. We hear the longbows firing off, sounding off their arrows, but not going to be able to pick up too much here. Spy numbers looking healthy for the Muslim. Where's the Janissary number? He's down to three Janissaries at the moment. Keep spamming out the Janissaries. Keep now. Going to be coming up for him here. Looking to try and hold on a little bit longer. Repairing up that Wingard Palace. We'll take a look at how the line of sight is looking for these guys. So we can see the Muslim with... 
I mean, it, it, he's got pretty decent control over his own side of the map. He's got the sacred site, but then for the mister, it's pretty much the same story on his side. Still yet to take the sacred site available to him over on this western flank, but realistically, he doesn't need it. He's got a thousand gold a minute trickling in. That's that's just obviously he's got relics. But the primary thing there, it's going to be your enclosures, isn't it? So a little bit of a lull. More production facilities coming down. We can see he's stacking up resources like crazy. Loses the archery range on the front side. Plenty of units in queue. Obviously, they're not able to be produced, but as soon as something dies on the front line, they'll be running out immediately. Bit of a counterattack now coming down towards the south side to Muslim. Going for it. 42 Spahi. And the question is whether we're going to get a quick wall in. And we can see stone walls immediately drop down. And this is my fear. That, uh, that it just, it makes it, it, it it's too hard for raiding uh, when you've got villagers that could just wall up the passage like this, but we hear the wall delete. Ha <laughs> ha! You fools, you fools, you hadn't realized all along there was another way in. And now Demuz, I'm going to be breaking through from that position instead. And I think at this point in time, I mean, you got two options. Do you go for villagers or do you dare think about going for a landmark snipe? Always going to be an option open to you. Obviously with the great bombards, they can always find their way into a sneaky little... You know, you can work them around the edges here. Bring them in. Boom, headshot. Boom, headshot. You know, look to take out these landmarks. But it looks like he's going to be going after villagers for the moment. We don't see fortitude used just yet by these units. He's got a huge amount of spar. He will take a look and see whether he's sealed up the gap just yet. It looks like he's trying his best. He's going to be going for a bit of a stone wall over here. And once again, drawing attention away from that front line. You can, you can definitely feel right now like the Muslim is trying his best to draw the attention away from this front line. Counter trebuchets, counter counter wave trebuchet is going to be coming out here. Great bombards firing off, cleaning up the first of a couple of longbowmen. Just eating them all up alive. And now the spy are going to be running back through the base, trying their best. Oh, oh, we could have a bit of a back flank here. We'll enter into the cinematic mode as it looks like Demusen is going to be attempting to try and flank from behind. At the same time, the bombard's going to be moving up, trying to take out the units. Spy he coming through. Trebuchets might be going down here. Spy doing a pretty decent job. They're going to be throwing out their attacks as fast as they can. But remember, we know Siege Works is on these bad boys. They've got extra health. And now the bombards looking to try and take down the, the keep. Indeed, they got to take down that keep. Look at the damage that's coming out. But now they're at the same time, Time. We've got no defense in here for the Bombards. There's a couple of them just chilling out for the moment with John Cena. They're going to th think about it for a second. Think about it, Bombards. What do you want to do with yourselves? Where do you want to be when you grow up? They don't even know. They're just thinking about the farms and the good old days. And now all of a sudden, Mister is just rampaging over the base of the Muslim. Things not looking good for the Muslim at all. Reinforcements coming in nonstop. We can hear them through our headsets and through our speakers, whatever way you wish to be listening to the, your broadcast here. And now those Bombards are going to fire down upon the infantry. It's big shots. I don't know whether it's going to be big enough, though. As unfortunately, the Knights are going to be able to clean up the remnants of what remains here. And all the great bombs of bombards have gone down. We see one more out on the field with a second one just popping out of the siege workshop. But unfortunately, things not looking good for the Muslim. Unfortunately, it may be an English victory here today. Now, just remember, even if it is an English victory here today, we're still going to have action for you. There is a fifth and final game in this play all five series. And the Muslim looks to try and hold on, but the trebuchets, the non-stop pushing coming out from the Muslim, or rather from uh, from the mister, just looking too damn difficult to deal with here. You can see him just pumping in units non-stop. He's got a little bit of a grey bombard on the backside, but the treb's going to be able to focus it down. And we can see that the health on that grey bombard are, is indeed going down. And as a result, it looks like the Janissary is not going to be able to do anything against the the, uh, the trebuchets. You're going to need something better, something stronger, something faster to counter those trebuchets. And he's trying his best to hold on from this position, but the trebs just continue working their magic down on the buildings behind this and firing off. Look at the damage that comes out from those trebuchets. You know, the, we talk about the great bombards, but perhaps the real hero of the story is the trebuchets and the friends that we made along the way. Trebs just continuing to take down the, the rest of the infrastructure here in the base. And indeed, good game does get called. Demos, I'm going to be tapping out. And Mister, you're going to be victorious in this series. But do not go anywhere, fellas. The next game coming up will be the fifth game, the final game between these two players. It is, of course, sponsored by EGC TV. Make sure you check them out. 15 GMT Saturday and Sunday. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.